Every day we ask so many questions. What should I wear? What's the weather going to be like? How am I going to fit everything in? But then there are those bigger questions, like why am I here? Where am I heading? Is there more to life than this? I had arrived at an answer to the most important issue that we humans ever deal with. Is there a God? And I had arrived there without ever really looking at the evidence. And I was supposed to be a scientist. At 28, uh, I had gotten many of the things that I thought I wanted. You know, my girlfriend was on the cover of magazines, I had a Beamer, and I was so unhappy. It was a realization maybe that I would, I would never find happiness where I was looking for. I think for so many years, you know, I always just strived to be strong in myself. All I needed was me and my buddies and, you know, would be like invincible. But the truth is, none of us are. And I found purpose, I found meaning, I found hope. God took something so broken and made it a beautiful art piece. Alpha is a place where you can be yourself. You can say what you think and challenge everything. No, no question is too complex or too simple. And what your point of view is, is as important as anyone else's. We are going on a journey together, an adventure to explore the questions of life, faith, and meaning. Welcome to our Clevedon Baptist Church service. We are so glad you have joined with us. We hope that you will be encouraged and strengthened as you join with us to listen to God's word, to worship and to pray together. In Chronicles chapter 15, we read, The Lord is with you when you are with him. If you seek him, he'll be found by you. I pray that as you watch this service, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, you will know God is with you. Let's worship him together. It's who, oh Lord, could save themselves, they also could hear. Our shame was deeper than the sea, your grace is deeper still. You can rescue, you alone can save, you alone can lift us from the grave. You came down to find us, let us out of death. To you alone belongs the highest praise.
light. We lift up our eyes, lift up our eyes, you're the keeper of light. We lift up our eyes, lift up our eyes, you're the keeper of light. You alone can rescue, you alone can save, you alone can lift us from.
where the weak may be strong, where the Savior's love through the storm, He is known, we know He's Lord of all. God who we can put our trust in, the God of hope. I love this photo. It's of my dad Alf and my son Luke and me. Uh, two dads, three sons, a granddad, a dad, a grandson. Well, it's, it's the three of us. See, it's Father's Day today. Uh, a few years ago, my children presented me with this cup and it says world's greatest dad well there you go the bible tells us that it's through jesus and by the holy spirit that we can know that we can call god our heavenly father we're going to watch some video from home for good and then matt and emma will lead us in Father's Day prayers. Thank you, Matt and Emma, for leading us in prayer. So let's pray together. Lord, because you have made me, I owe you the whole of my love. Because you have redeemed me, I owe you the whole of myself. Because you have promised so much, I owe you my whole being. I owe you more than my whole self, but I have no more. And by myself, I cannot render the whole of it to you. Draw me to you, Lord, in the fullness of your love. I am wholly yours by creation. Make me all yours too, in love. Amen. Dear God, we celebrate how blessed we are to be called your children. However old we are, thank you that you want us in your family. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the men you put in our lives who have cared for us, for earthly fathers and carers of every type, uncles, grandfathers, and the many men who help raise us. 
Where we miss them, may you comfort us. Amen. As we pray for each other, we recognise that sometimes fathers are not perfect like you are. Where we are hurt, may you restore us. Amen. We pray for those who are part of caring for children in all sorts of different ways. For those in schools, social or health services, churches and hospitals. Fill them with the fruit of your spirit and equip them for the work you have set before them. Amen. We pray for those who are feeling lonely today. Help us to see them and reach out to be community to those who need it. We pray especially for children who are lonely today. Help us to find a home for every child who needs one. Amen. Amen. Well, I'll put my world's greatest dad trophy down here. And I'd like to share two really important pieces of information. Firstly, online Alpha. Come and be part of the Clevedon Baptist Church Alpha course. It starts on Monday the 29th of June at 7.30. And the second exciting piece of information is that after weeks of lockdown, our church building is now open for prayer. So that means you can come now into the building and spend uh, a few minutes in prayer and reflection, praying for others, praying for yourself. And it's called Hope Space as we partner with Hope Together and 24-7 Prayer. And if you're wondering what it looks like, well, here's some video to show you Hope Space, a place to reflect and pray. Welcome to the Clevedon Baptist Church Hope Space. We want this to be a safe place for you to come and reflect and pray. So come inside and see what Hope Space looks like. This is Hope Space 2.
We are back again in Exodus chapter 1. In Exodus chapter 1, God's people are experiencing a lockdown moment. They are being held, locked down, being held captives, slaves, so says our Bible text. So the Egyptians made the Israelites their slaves. They appointed brutal slave drivers over them, hoping to wear them down with crushing labour. The Egyptians worked the people of Israel without mercy. They made their lives bitter, forcing them to mix mortar and make bricks and do all the work in the fields. They were ruthless in their demands. And that, that phraseology in Exodus 1 verse 14 speaks of how the Egyptians worked them and broke them down. Uh, it's more than a lockdown. The word means broken down. God's people held captive, in lockdown, trapped, broken down. And in these Exodus lockdown moments, before the Exodus departure, before the escape, before liberation and deliverance, before Moses was doing his God-given task, there is the mention in Exodus chapter 1, in the co context of lockdown and days of pressure, in days they would have rather not been experiencing, yet somehow coping, somehow clinging on. In Exodus chapter 1, three times it speaks of growth and multiplying. This was a God, grace, gospel thing. So look and see this God, grace, gospel thing in Exodus chapter 1. From 70 of them, and these are the names of the sons of Israel, that is Jacob, who moved to Egypt with their father, each with his family, to, verse 7, in fact they multiplied so greatly that they became extremely powerful and filled the land. Then verse 12, but the more the Egyptians oppressed them, the more the Israelites multiplied and spread. Verse 20, the Israelites continued to multiply, growing more and more powerful. I love the way God does maths. 5 plus 2, 5 loaves, 2 fish equals... 5,000 people fed. In Exodus chapter 1, it's the maths, God's maths, of multiplication and growth. In Exodus 1, it's about family life and the gift of children and more children. And on this Father's Day, we remember, we celebrate, we are grateful for fathers, for children, for families. And we I'm sure we'd want to find ways we can affirm, support, help, encourage families. Recognising with honesty, it's not always easy and it's not always plain sailing. There are highs and there are lows in family life. But we thank God for fathers, for children, for families this day. I've got this prayer with me today and it reads like this, a family prayer. Creator God, you have placed each one of us in a family. One day it seems like a stroke of genius on your part. Another day it can feel as if you've made a big mistake. In our family relationships, we experience the height of acceptance and the depth of rejection. The excitement of finding you, even as we discover our true selves through sharing with those we love. The spiritual claustrophobia of evil forces as we injure and damage those who are closest to us. You are the one from whom all families seek blessing. You are our caring Father. We are women, men and children created in your glorious image. Bring us through the pain of repentance 
into the freedom of your forgiveness. Make us whole that we may bring healing to our families. Come Holy Spirit, renew and restore our homes. We pray in Jesus' name. The Exodus 1 passage is another reminder of how children, the very life and well-being of children, comes under all kinds of threats and attacks in this fallen world. The protection of children, the need for us to be facing up to the evil, cruel and satanic threats and actions made against children in the world then in Exodus chapter 1. Well, you read on and yes, it's an uncomfortable read, the killing of the Israelite sons. And it's not stopped because similar threats and actions by adults against children is still happening to children in our world today. This therefore is part of our seeking and praying for God's justice on this Father's Day in 2020. God of justice, we are appalled that so many children are exploited, robbed of their childhood, health and future prospects in our world today. In our present lockdown situation, I'd like to encourage us to think and pray and look for multiplication and growth, to build into our lives a word and spirit of God, confidence and perspective, to encourage us to look and see God's grace, gospel things happening in these days that we will see the family of God growing as loads of people are born and born again. See, we may think, we may conclude that ministry and mission is now on hold, that it's stuck, that even it's over, that any previous mission advancements uh, now seem fragile, vulnerable, even ended. But these difficult lockdown moments could well prove to be the days of multiplication and growth for the kingdom. In Acts 8, the church is in a kind of Exodus 1 experience. They're facing opposition and persecution. All of a sudden, they are faced with a new normal. A great wave of persecution began that day, sweeping over the church in Jerusalem, and all the believers, except the apostles, were scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria. But the believers who were scattered preached the good news about Jesus wherever they went. Scattered around everywhere, they seized the moment to scatter the seed of the word of God, the good news of Jesus and the kingdom of God. Now the word in here means uh, so much more than preaching a sermon, nothing wrong with that, but it's to do with speaking out the good news declaration about Jesus in many forms, in many ways, not least simply by sharing this good news with others. I like the Apostle Paul's advice to us in Colossians 4, be wise in the way you act towards outsiders, make the most of every opportunity, let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Now one of the, the things I love is peanuts and uh, you can now buy peanuts, you can get them without salt. More healthy maybe, but definitely not so tasty. Words, conversations, which may be a conversation with a two metre social distance, 
but words, a conversation seasoned with salt. Words with that extra salty, seasoned, tasty dimension for the things of God and the kingdom. Words, salty words that could go towards creating a spiritual thirst in and through the simplicity of a gracious, salty conversation. Then Luke in Acts 8 gives an example of Philip. Philip, for example, went to the city of Samaria, told the people about the Messiah. The people believed Philip's message of good news concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. As a result, many men and women were baptised. There is a type of Exodus 1, multiplication and growth. Then we get a church on location report from Luke. The church then had peace throughout Judea, Galilee and Samaria and it became stronger as the believers lived in the fear of the Lord. And with the encouragement of the Holy Spirit, it also grew in numbers. Another type of Exodus 1 multiplication and growth. It seems that scattered, they got on with gospel seed sowing through sharing words and having conversations and they got on with the task of being kinds of spiritual midwives seeing people born again into the kingdom of God or to continue with the seed analogy they got on with bringing in the harvest of lives transformed as people believed in Jesus and the church grew. Multiplication and growth in Exodus 1 and in Acts chapter 8. For this is how God and the kingdom often works. Tim Chester explores church history and he writes, Satan has has tried to destroy the church and prevent the preaching of the gospel, but each time God has demonstrated his sovereign power. Adapting Exodus chapter 1 verse 7, Christians have been fruitful and multiply greatly and become exceedingly numerous so that the earth is filled with them. Multiplication and growth in the every night and day or in lockdown nights and days or breakdown scattered church moments for this is how God often works. See part of the theology of Exodus and Acts is an insight in how God is at work even when it's not stated or appreciated or understood. The God who controls history is all over history, who acts and speaks in history, who will one day complete history in the final ultimate harvest moment of the kingdom. It's the doctrine of divine providence, the hand and purposes of God in every circumstance of life. Such a theological underpinning gives to us, according to Alistair Begg, comfort in trouble, security in the face of chaos, humility in success three great things for us in these lockdown moments comfort in trouble security in the face of chaos humility in success the amazing wonderful mystery and reality of God somehow yet clearly at work in and through it all Alec Moita writing under the title seeing him who is invisible he writes he he says this beloved do you believe in a sovereign God the Lord has sovereign power over all the power of the enemy his power reaches right down oh the sovereign God 
and the church is in the hand of God. You are and I am. We are in his plan of increase, in his care for protection and in his power for deliverance. Wickedness may have its day, but it will not have its triumph. So here we are, we're out in the garden, in the rain, that's the kind of gardener I am, and we're at my veg patch, which a few months ago was uh, totally empty, just full of weeds, and I got some seeds, um, put them into the ground, and did some sowing, and, well, look what's uh, happened here. I, I waited and uh, nothing much seemed to happen. I, I tried not to lose too much sleep over what appeared to be a lack of seed growing activity. Then a shoot, a leaf, a plant, a veg patch. Look what the seed has done. And Jesus says in Mark 4, the kingdom of God is like a farmer who scatters seed on the ground night and day while he's asleep or awake. The seed sprouts and grows but he does not understand how it happens the earth produces the crops on its own first the leaf blade push, pushes through then the heads of wheat are formed and finally the grain ripens as soon as the grain is ready the farmer comes and harvests it with a sickle for the harvest time has come i love how the confidence of the farmer comes through. He patiently waits, watches and sees signs and hints of the wonder of how seeds sown into the, into the soil do their thing. It sprouts and it grows until it's harvested time. I love the wisdom that comes from the farmer. It's the parable of my veg patch or more importantly a parable about the kingdom of God. It's the doctrine of divine providence. It's the biblical testimony from some of the most difficult moments in the life and experiences of God's people in Exodus 1 and Acts chapter 8. It's God doing the maths. It's growing and multiplying. And with a word and spirit of God confidence, we pray that it will be our story. Please God, as we've been scattered in these difficult, challenging lockdown days, we pray today, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We come to the Lord's Supper and we have the opportunity again to remember and to proclaim Christ's death until he comes again. Here is the opportunity for us to examine our lives, for us to be real and right with God, for us to seek God's cleansing and forgiveness. Here is the opportunity to remember, to proclaim, to take hold of again the great salvation that we have in Jesus. Sovereign God, we celebrate the message of the gospel proclaimed at this table. We are reminded here of the triumph of love, your victory through Christ over violence, hatred and intolerance. In a world still scarred by these evils, you promise that love will finally win through. For that assurance, Lord, we thank you. We are reminded here of the triumph of truth, your victory through Christ over deceit, corruption and falsehood. In a world still wracked by these evils, you promise that truth will finally win through. For that assurance, Lord, we thank you. We are reminded here 
of the triumph of grace, your victory through Christ over guilt, sinfulness and rebellion against you. In a world still troubled by these evils, you promise that grace will finally win through. For that assurance, Lord, we thank you. We are reminded here of the triumph of life, your victory through Christ over death, destruction and loss. In a world still broken by these evils, you promise that life will finally win through. For that assurance, Lord, we thank you. And so bread and wine, light and life, love and mercy, grace and truth. These are God's gifts offered to you. Take and rejoice. And so for all those who know Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. Let's eat, let's drink. Although we can't be together, let's eat, let's drink together, remembering and proclaiming Christ together. And so, Lord, we thank you and we worship you and we draw close to you.
Christ, as you have served, may we serve in turn. As you have loved, may we love in turn. As you have cared, may we care in turn. As you have lived, may we live in turn. Until that day we are one with you and with all your people, and you are all in all. Amen. We're all made from dust to mirror your glory. 